Hi and welcome to the Waterbrook Online. I'm the Reverend Dr. Pete Odera and we have a new series beginning and it's called The Possessors of the Gates. Have you ever met somebody? I, I met a girl, she was as beautiful as they ever could be. Uh, I was much younger, this was almost like 30 years ago and she was, um, she was in her late uh, maybe late teens or early 20s she was uh, in fact I, was, I remember that day I was at the DJ Pinyi and we met this girl and she was she was gorgeous until she opened her mouth when she opened her mouth the swear words that came out I mean it was just completely off-putting to me at the time uh, and I say that uh, respectfully as respectfully as I can uh, you know, uh, today's topic is called cute but crazy. That girl was cute, but she was crazy. Stay with me to hear more about this topic, cute but crazy. Could that be you? Welcome to the Waterbrook Online. Today's topic is cute but crazy. We started a series called Possessors of the Gate. God wants the blessing that you continue to hear. It begins in the book of Genesis, it goes um, a little further and by the time we're in Psalms, uh, it's become something else. Uh, and the Lord was saying, uh, may you possess the gates of your enemies. Uh, let's read the scriptures. First Samuel chapter nine um, is interesting. We're talking here about Saul. There's two, two scriptures I'm going to read. One is 1 Samuel chapter 9, verse 1 through 3. And it says, There was a man of Benjamin whose name was Kish, the son of Abiel, son of Zeror, son of Becheroth, son of Ephiah, a Benjamite, a man of wealth. And he had a son whose name was Saul, a handsome young man. So number one, he was handsome. There was not a man among the people of Israel more handsome than he. So there's two things that you see. He came from a wealthy family, he was handsome. Number three, from his shoulders upward, he was taller than any of the people. Let's look at uh, Psalms 127. Behold, children are a heritage from the Lord, the fruit of the womb a reward. Like arrows in the hand of a warrior are the children of one's youth. Blessed is the man who fills his quiver with them. He shall not be put to shame when he speaks with his enemies in the gate. Uh, some versions say, contend with the enemy at the gate. Um, I, I wanna start this series, you know, the, the Lord, the blessing to Rebecca, the blessing to Rebecca was that she may possess the gate of the enemies. And before that, the idea was God was blessing Abraham. And he said to Abraham, may you, may you possess the gate of the enemy. We want to come to a place where we begin to understand that there's something that God wants for us to do, to be possessors of the gates. I know we've talked about, and many are familiar with the teaching about the seven hills, but I want to talk at some point about the 12 gates. That's not today's subject, but the, the 12 gates are, let me say, an extrapolation, uh, going a little further, a little deeper than the seven hills. The 12 gates are God's structure and God wants us to possess the gates. So allow me to start with an interesting story. I want to say that you can be qualified, but completely unprepared. I'm going to say that again. You can be qualified, but unprepared. When I was in primary school, I was one of the fastest runners. I was at the Hospital Hill Primary School. I was one of the fastest runners. Um, and uh, I'd always be among the top five top five in my class or whatever it is when we're running doing house sports I was number two number three um, now when I went to high school I went to Cardinal Otunga High School uh, which was in Kisi in Western Kenya when I went to high school I found that I was in over my head I was where in over my head my fastest time I mean the fastest time I could run remember I was just coming out of primary school my fastest time was nothing in comparison to the people I was running against and I was running against 
the best of the best. Um, in fact, I just happened to be in the same school as Kennedy Ondiek. Now, uh, to, to many of us, many of us now are familiar with Ferdinand Omanyala, the Kenya, the Africa Commonwealth 100 meters champion. Kennedy Ondiek in the 1980s was the fastest sprinter. He was the fastest sprinter that Kenya had ever produced at the time. Um, he would run a handheld, I think it was a handheld timer, handheld time of, uh, I think it was 10.9 seconds. He was super fast, 10.9 handheld back at that time for the 100 meters. Uh, he did 100 meters, 200 meters, uh, and I, th I think he did the long jump. Um, but his, his, his time, that 10.9, was a whole at least one second faster than my best time. At my very best, I was doing something like 11, 11.9 maybe. Uh, so that was a whole second faster than me. Uh, it was my best time, which would mean that he was at least, at least 10 meters in front of me. That means when he had finished, I was still 10 meters behind because at that time, you know, you're running about 10 meters every second. So... I was in over my head when I ran against Kennedy on Dick. I was a champion in my space, in my primary school, but I went into the new platform. I was a minnow. I was a minnow in a pool full of sharks. Kennedy Ondiek was the Kenya champion, Eastern Central Africa champion for 100 meters. He was a monster. He'd run and beat everybody and he was happy about it. But can I go a little further? When he went, when he, when he went to the Olympics, when he ran at the Olympics and, and the Commonwealth Games, Kennedy Ondiek was in over his head. He was in over his head. His best finishing, his best finishing was eighth in his heat. So my number one, my number one was like his number 10. His number one was like the world's number eight. He was qualified but unprepared for the international platform. I hope you're hearing me. He was qualified. He was a great runner but not good enough at the top five. Not good enough for the top five. You can be qualified. You can be qualified but completely unprepared for the next platform that God is setting you up for. And this is what our uh, topic today is really dealing with that you qualify but you're unprepared the scriptures that we began to read in first samuel is uh, chapter 9 is talking about king saul and king saul was qualified he was qualified but unprepared he he had pedigree he came from this particular family and they they read the qualifications because he 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 came from this family of wealth so he was good looking uh, the bible emphasizes it twice it says it twice he was good looking he was really good looking so he was handsome and that the bible says he was head and shoulders above everyone in other words he was tall he was handsome he had pedigree and they had money he was the obvious choice he was the obvious choice but when push came to shove he was in over his head you can be in over your head he was a giant at home because remember the Bible says he was a head and shoulders above everybody else. So he was good, qualified and stuff. He was a giant at home, but a dwarf next to Goliath. Giant at home, dwarf next to Goliath. God is bringing you to a new platform and you qualify where you are. And, and you may be involved in, in, in the arts, creative arts. You may be involved in business. And, and you, you've been saying that I want my business to grow. Uh, the Lord really has his hand upon me, wants my business to grow. Are you ready for the next platform? Are you a giant at home? but a dwarf next to Goliath. You need to be prepared for the next platform. The saying, uh, and, and this is what, what's important for us because many of us um, are comfortable when we're small, but when we get into the big arena, when we get into the international platform, who we truly are is revealed. Who we truly are begins to show up. And I want us to understand that because our season has come. For the longest time, people have been saying, it's time for Africa. For the longest time, you know, it's the, the, the season for the next generation. And, and Saul had the next generation anointing. He was the first of the kings. He was the first of his kind. He was the first of his kind. And when push came to shove, he let everybody down. 
here's what I'm saying because it's important for us to understand this thing that you can be qualified but unprepared now I've heard it said in church circles especially because you know uh, Christians like to say these things uh, God qualifies the called God doesn't call the qualified but qualifies the called and what tends to happen is it this particular saying comes from a place of the unqualified this is unfortunate the place of the unqualified and you you see you hear this because you know many people um, the, the saying isn't untrue you know God God will qualify the the call he'll call you and then qualify you but that doesn't mean that he doesn't call the qualified there's people that God calls who are qualified in the field that they are because what I found is sometimes these sayings are an excuse for mediocrity. We are moving into a space where we will no longer accept the mediocre. We, want the medi we don't want the mediocrity of the past generation. We want a higher standard. So I'm going to say, raise the bar for the one who leads you. Raise the bar for the one who leads you. Raise the bar for yourself. Raise the bar for your family. Raise the bar for your nation. Raise the bar. Because if you don't raise the bar, mediocrity will remain in your life. And we don't want mediocrity. The reason that Africa is poor is because Africa has accepted a very low standard of leadership. A low standard of leadership. A nation is as good as its legislators. If your leg legislators are no good, your country will be no good. A university is as good as its faculty. If the faculty is of high standards, then you will find higher standard students. And a corporation is as good as its leader. If the leader is rubbish, then the corporation will be rubbish. Don't let yourself be led by mediocre people. I'm going to say that again. Do not let yourself be led by mediocre people. If you want to improve your lot in life, don't allow yourself to be led by mediocre people. Be led by someone who's better than you. Be led by someone who's better than you. Don't allow mediocrity in your life. Now here's the thing, you know, and, and many of us, uh, you know, uh, Nigeria uh, later this year is going into an election period. Kenya is... Just, I mean, we are at the height of it right now. We're at the height of it right now. And our election is, uh, you know, our <laughs> but please remember this, even though we're the election period, this is not just about elections. This is about life. Don't let anyone who's mediocre lead you. This is just, if you want to be better, if you, so let me say something, you know, there's a pandemic of fluff in our generation there's a pandemic of fluff in our generation just fluffy people people who just can't do it somehow people got into the position but they're full of fluff somehow they qualified they qualified but they were unprepared this is because our systems our systems have loopholes to allow mediocrity rather than meritocracy and this, this is not just a Kenyan problem. You find this in Nigeria, you find this in Zimbabwe, you find this, you find this in Ghana. It's like somebody came and put a thing on us and say, you know what, you can qualify, but you don't have to live up to the standard that you, you, you can be mediocre. Who told you? And this is our standard. Our problem is that our standard, and you know, we've heard these stories in Ghana, we've heard these stories in Nigeria, we've heard these stories in South Africa, we've heard these stories in Kenya, that if you bribe a lecturer with cheap sex, you can graduate. Honey, you can do better than that. You can do better than that. I know people personally who came to me and said, uh, said Rev, uh, Dr. Pete, this, my lecturer is, is refusing to graduate me unless I give him sex. And I said, honey, you better stick by it. And they, they were delayed in their graduation, but eventually got there because they stood their ground. They refused the mediocrity. If you bribe the policeman, this happens Kenya. Nigeria, wherever, you know, bribe the policeman or the NTSA, the National Transport Systems Association, whatever that thing is. If you bribe that guy, you can pass the driving test. We have to decide that we want better standards for ourselves. Raise the bar, child of God. Raise the bar. Say to yourself, I'm done with mediocre. I'm done with low standards. I want high standards. I'm not just going to uh, en endure this low standards. We're, 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 I want to do better. I want to do better. And so I'm saying be prepared for the next level. Be prepared for the next level. Begin to raise the standards. Uh, you know, uh, 
Start with the unseen things. Decide that, you know what, I'm not going to wear torn socks anymore. I'm only going to wear socks that work. <laughs> Guys, you know what I'm talking about. Brethren, you know, sometimes we wear this nice suit, but our socks and our underwear leaves a lot to be desired. Decide that in the little things, you're going to raise the bar. It may mean that you're going to have to cough out a little more money to get a better quality pair of socks or whatever it is that you need to get. Don't get to that major platform and find that you're unprepared and in over your head. You're going to have to start with the unseen things because that's the secret. That's the, the secret. The, there's a secret in the progress is that it begins in the unseen. What does the Bible say? Uh, when you go and pray, go to your father who sees who is in, in secret and your father who sees all things in secret shall reward you openly. In other words, the secret life is the one that begins to give effort and expression to the scene. Make every effort to ensure that you're a person of substance, a person of substance that in the hidden space you have substance. Don't be too eager to get to the front. Don't be too eager to get to the top and then you forget why. You get to that space and you forget why. You forget why. Be prepared. Be prepared. Be prepared. I want to tell two quick stories and then I'm out of here for this uh, interesting uh, subject for today cute but crazy the first one I, I entitled the runner with no message in the book of first Samuel chapter 18 in the book of first Samuel chapter 18 from verse 19 there's an interesting story now um, it's a long reading so I won't read it but I'll tell the story David is experiencing an uprising there's a rebellion and that rebellion has been led by his son Absalom Ahimaaz, who was the son of Zadok the priest, had a desire to run the message. So the story unfolds and, and, and Absalom, is the, the Bible reports that he's riding on a mule and his hair or his head gets stuck in some trees and they come and they kill him. They put all these spears in him and he dies and then he's brought down and they pile a pile of stones on him and, and now the king's son is dead and somebody has to take the message. Ahimaaz, who was the son of Zadok the priest, had a desire to run with a message to the king. And David the king was waiting for this news. He was awaiting the news of his son Absalom, who had been killed by Joab and his men. Now, if you read the story, it's a very fascinating story. It was a tricky situation at best. Absalom had just led this rebellion. He just read, led this rebellion that almost saw the king perish. So he was, in a sense, an enemy. He had seen the king. I mean, can you imagine that, that your own son, it, this is like, it's a palace coup, and he's, he's leading it. And the king almost perished. But Absalom was also the king's son, a prince, an heir to the throne. Ahimaaz saw this as an opportunity to find uh, elevation or promotion for bringing good news. The trouble was, this wasn't really good news. It wasn't really good news. So Joab, the king's captain of the, the king's army, Joab elected to have Cushi deliver the message instead. So Cushi wasn't the regular deliverer of this message. He wasn't the regular deliverer. He wasn't, he, uh, and, and um, uh, Joab wasn't sure of what the king's reaction would be. So he didn't want to risk it. He wanted some clarity. He wanted to send somebody with some clarity, send somebody with some definition, send somebody who had actually seen what was going on. But Ahimaaz insisted. Joab sent Cushi, but Ahimaaz insisted. And the Bible reports that he had run the messenger by going via a shortcut. And sometimes people arrive at the place where you're supposed to go using a shortcut, but they aren't the true deal. And we'll be talking about this in a subsequent message. I'll be talking about the message called Pyrite or Fool's Gold. When Ahimaaz gets there, the king asked him what the message is, because of course he arrived first. When he gets there, the king asked him, what's the message? But he had no message because he didn't witness the goings on. So Ahimaaz gets there, he runs in, but he has no message. 
Ahimas got to the platform of kings but had no substance. Some of us get to the platform of kings but have no substance because Ahimas was in a hurry to be seen as efficient. Sometimes we're in a hurry to be seen as efficient, to be seen as having arrived, to be seen as important, but we have no substance. We have no substance. Cushy, on the other hand, had a very important message because he was an eyewitness. He was a first-hand witness and he was sent by Joab and he had the content the king was anticipating. He had the content that the king was anticipating. Sometimes people get the likes, sometimes people get the followings, get all the views that you want but have no content because all it is is fluff. Ahimaaz found that he was unprepared when he got to the platform of kings without content and in over his head. He was a messenger with no message. He was a messenger with no message. Let me ask, what is your message? What is your message? What is your message? Now, it, you don't really have to be a preacher to have a message. You can be in tech but have no message. In other words, your product is fluff. You can be in farming, but your product is fluff. Have you come to the platform when the world so desperately needs something of substance and you are unable to deliver? What's your message? What's your content? I want to go to the second story, which is a king with no spine. And this is the interesting story about uh, King David and King Saul. Now we all know this story. The story of King Saul starts in chapter 9, but this entire story goes all the way until uh, chapter 18 and beyond of 1 Samuel when David confronts Goliath. Saul was the champion of Israel as we've seen. He was the king, he was the head and shoulders above everyone else. He had wealth, he had status and the good looks to match. So he was, he was all that and a bag of chips. He was all that and a bag of chips with some guacamole on the side. <laughs> but when the giant of Gath showed up, he froze. When the giant of Gath showed up, he froze. He was a champion in his village. I've talked about this before. You can be a champion in your village. But when he got to the international platform where real giants existed, he choked. <coughs> he couldn't do it. It's possible to have qualified for the arena. It's possible to qualify for the arena that you're in, but fail when measured against other true accomplishers, people who are accomplished. When your degree is measured, when your degree is measured against other people's degree, what comes up? Is it all fluff? And when push came to shove, Saul failed to even confront his enemy, didn't show up for the event, didn't show up, didn't show up. David, on the other hand, was unafraid. He was unafraid. Um, there's a friend called David that I have. I call him Dave the Brave. Dave the Brave. <laughs> Dave was unafraid. Dave was brave. He was unafraid. He came out with his sling swinging. He came out ready to rumble. He came out ready to do battle. We can see that Saul was a king without spine. He was a king without spine. He was qualified, but unprepared qualified but unprepared. When pressure came, he lost his nerve and ultimately his mind. He lost his nerve and lost his mind. He ultimately lost his mind. Allow me to talk right now, and I think this may be the crux of my message. Allow me to talk to the young preachers, young pastors and so-called coaches today. Because there's people online uh, just giving all sorts of, uh, you know, if you go on your Instagram, you go on Facebook, you go on YouTube, there's all kinds of people with all kinds of messages and it's all flashy and all that. Allow me to talk to, allow me to talk to you. Allow me to talk to you musicians and platform people. What is your message? What is your message? There is a difference between those who went and those who were sent. There are those who went and then there are those who were sent. And this is important to you because my pastor told me this message and it stuck with me forever. Are you among those who went or those who were sent? Because there's many people who go out there and they begin to teach and begin to preach and present all these kinds of things. Uh, and there's a rush, there's a rush to obtain the trimmings and trappings that come with public ministry or performance because we want the views, we want the, the flash, we want to dress a certain way, you know, the matching towels and shoes and the big cars and so on. But are you among those who went 
or those who were sent. This is critical, especially if you're a minister of the gospel. Who sent you? Who sent you? The results speak for themselves because the reason that we have a lot of people who are cute but crazy is because there's a whole lot of people who just went and were not sent. Cute but crazy. Uh, also, let me, let, me, let, me make a, let me make a point here. You, you can be cute but crazy. This was exactly what was happening to, to Saul. Uh, you, you, you know, the, the people, and I met them, I met people who've, who've had meltdown and explosion after explosion. They're in the public eye or in public ministry or in whatever it is that they are, uh, and, and they're just explosion after explosion. Nobody seems to, and you know, it comes across like this, nobody seems to understand my gift. Nobody, or, or so you say or so you say. You're gifted, but you never settle. You're cute, but clash with everyone. You're anointed, but a total and complete tornado. You're cute, but you're crazy. But let me help you with something here. Baby, let me help you. The common denominator in all these infernos and tornadoes is you. And you have to make a commitment to change. You have to make a commitment to change because there's nothing. Listen, you, you may be 26, 27, and you're crashing, which is which is okay. You can change, but there's nothing worse than 10 years later. You're still doing the same thing. You're cute, but you're crazy. People don't want to do business with you because there's a history of carnage in your wake. There's a history of, of all sorts of things. You look cute on Instagram. You look great on Facebook. You you know you've packaged yourself well, but you're a complete mess. Hey, slow down, pull up the handbrake and be committed. Make a commitment to change. Make a commitment to change. Make a commitment for transformation, true transformation, that you can go beyond, be before the Father and allow the Holy Spirit, allow the Word of God, allow a man of God to teach you, train you, disciple you, bring you to the place where you're transformed and you're a better quality person. Because what's crazy is this, is that you can preach to all these people, you can sing for all these people, you can try and coach all these people, but all you will produce is who you really are. This is the truth. You reproduce who you really are. Meltdown after meltdown, God can help you. God can help you. If you look at your life and it's just a series of meltdowns, God can help you. Don't be like Saul, elected but ineligible. He qualified but he was unprepared. This was of his own making. I want to help you. I want to help you. I want to help you see this, that we, we've had an entire generation let down by people who are qualified, but were unprepared. We've had an entire let down uh, by people who were, uh, were elected, but ineligible, ineligible, uh, because they, they got there and they broke it down. You, you see it all the time in, in pop music. They were at the top of the game, but behind the scenes, they were pedophiles. Hello? They were running the race and in actual races, but they were on drugs and steroids all the time. Let me help you understand this thing. You don't want to get there and then get disqualified. Don't be like that runner who's only happy to be the local champion, but falls apart at the important international platform. There's another platform. There are opportunities. Listen to me. There are opportunities that are coming to young Africans in the near and present future. There's opportunities. I'm telling you not just because of, of, of a prophetic unction in my life, but this is just fact, it's a fact. Opportunities in the creative arts, opportunities in technologies, opportunities in innovation. There's opportunities that are opening. Bro, don't break the greatest opportunity in your life. Generations are depending on you. If you're cute but you're crazy and you admit it to yourself, at least you can tell God, you know what, I know I have all that it takes in terms of the looks, but I just, I, I'm, I'm unprepared. Help me prepare. God will prepare you. God will make you everything that you're supposed to be. I know it because I'm a witness. I'm a witness. God can do it for you. Don't be cute and crazy. Don't die on the platform because you fail to prepare. Let me help you with that. Uh, final quick story. You, you do know the story of Alexander the Great. Alexander the Great was one of the uh, greatest generals and greatest leaders in the Western world in terms of history. And he went conquering everywhere and anything. 
But he didn't die in battle. He didn't die in battle. He didn't die sitting in office after having done all this and sat and was able to look at his entire empire. Uh, history reports or records that he died after a drunken binge and died of pneumonia, whatever it is. And it's not absolutely clear, but he didn't die a honorable death. He died this kind of just what a waste of a life. Don't be like that. Don't be like that. When you get there, when you get there, and you're gonna get there, when you get there, you need to be able to deliver what there requires. The world, in fact, the Bible says this, it says it like this, it says that creation awaits the manifestation of the sons of God. Creation is groaning everywhere you look. They're looking for people with answers, whether it's in government, whether it's in sports, whether it's in entertainment, they're looking for people with authenticity and substance. Could it be that that's you? Generations are depending on you. This is your opportunity. Allow me to pray with you as we go to prepare you to become the possessors of the gate. This is part one of the series, Possessors of the Gate. And I'm dealing with the first things, cute but crazy. Allow me to pray with you. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, we're coming before you today, understanding that you have a higher call for us. Father, I pray that you help us to raise the bar and demand higher standards, not just of our leaders, but of ourselves. Father, see our brokenness in the places where we are self-sabotaging our own success. And help us, Lord, in the spaces where we are cute but acting crazy. Help us, Lord God. Help us. Help us. Help us. I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. The Lord bless you. Thank you for being with us on the Water Book Online. Hey, thank you for staying with us all the way until the end on the Waterbrook Online. What an incredible message. Cute but crazy. Many of us are in that space. Hey, send this to somebody. They may, <laughs> they may not be totally happy when you send it to them because it seems like you're calling them names. But the reality is if they watch it, it'll, it's going to be a blessing to them. So thank you for staying with us. I pray that as you share this with somebody, it'll be a blessing to them. The lessons therein are critical for the next generation. We need to definitely raise the bar. Uh, I'm also here to, to really just thank you for um, staying with us by way of your support, your financial support for just keeping us in this place. As you can see, we've set it up. Uh, we're here at the Kofisi offices in Karen. There are five other locations, that's six locations in Nairobi, and we're in such a blessing to us by allowing us the privilege of shooting at this fantastic locations and you can check it out you know go to Kafisi uh, Africa wherever you are and just check them out uh, but it's not free it costs us to be here it costs us to be here and uh, my office is uh, upstairs but I want you to understand that the truth is I'm really blessed and privileged to to be here because of what you've done with your money your money has been able to help us to be a blessing to uh, our missionaries, uh, Pastor Emmerich, uh, who's in the picture here, and Pastor Carol, who's also in the picture, and to our other missionary, who is Cornelius Mother, who's in this picture here as well. Uh, thank you for supporting us in this way. Uh, so your giving hasn't just paid for the production, it's also helped to be a support to these missionaries. So thank you so much. Um, if you've never done it before, I'm going to help you. But if you've been with us, uh, man, thank you so much. Uh, the way to give, of course, is there's two ways that we have right now. Number one is you can place a standing order in your bank account uh, or give a one-time gift. And one-time gift will go to the Waterbrook Ministry, the Waterbrook Ministry, and our bank account is held at Stand Big Kenya at Kenyatta Avenue Branch. Our account number is 010286-7596. That's 010286-7596. And you can, like I said, put a standing order. That means that every month there's a certain amount that you're giving to us, or you can be a blessing with a one-time gift, and the Lord will bless you. The other way you can do it is by our mobile money platform, and our mobile money platform is a very simple one. It's the M-Pesa mobile money platform and our pay bill is 345086 it's a pay bill 345086 and the account uh, number is either your name or your reason for giving and the Lord will bless you again one more time thank you for being a blessing to us sending your donations and being able to sustain us right here again the Lord bless you thank you for being on the Waterbrook Online I'm the Reverend Dr. Pete Odera right here on the Waterbrook Online